What a week it's been here. Uh, we had beautiful 60 degree weather, followed by a snowstorm that brought us uh, 8 to 10 inches of snow and an inch of ice. And we were out of power for 36 hours. So that was a lot of fun. And then on top of that, I ended up with COVID <laughs> that, that week. Uh, so it's been a couple weeks really since I've been out here working, um, just because I've been laid up in bed uh, pretty hard. I had like a 103 fever and the worst I've ever had it because I've had it like four times and it really isn't that bad, at least for me. That one kicked the shit out of me. So uh, yeah, back at it and uh, finally have the time and energy to pull the tires off of the CB450 uh, to go get the new new shoes, uh, new tires put on. So let's, uh, without too much waste, pull these tires off, these rims off, and then we'll load them up in the car, head over, get them, uh, get the new ones installed, and then put them back on the bike. Should be pretty straightforward. So let's get to it. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can break this loose. It wasn't too bad. Is that other side spinning? It wasn't, is it? All right. Well, that wasn't too bad. Really expected that to be quite worse. I have to look up the torque figures on that because I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, looks like that's just 10 mil. We're gonna go ahead and loosen up these tensioners. Trying to keep the jam nuts in the same position. Almost forgot, got to disconnect these brakes. There we go. Get that brake removed. that was stuck in there still not ready to give up the ghost Whew. holy shit that was stuck wow just some really 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 old grease just turned into glue All right, that wasn't a pain in the ass at all, but there's one out. Let's see how bad these drums are in the back. Um, wow, they're actually in pretty good shape. That's not bad. A little corrosion, but uh, all in all, that's. That's not too bad. All right, let's just collect all our parts and pieces so we don't lose anything. All right, just enough to get that front wheel in the air. The front's pretty straightforward. We've got one cap on this side, and then we just have axle nut on this side with a cotta pin. So, we'll pull that off, release the axle, and hopefully, unlike the other side, 
it's going to come apart a little bit easier. There we go. Now it's resting on the back. Axle nut. Should just be able to crack those. Okay. Might need a little persuasion as well. Not nearly as much. cable here. Just disconnect that. There we go. That's a much easier front to take off than that rear was. With these tires off, uh, we'll bring them over and get the new uh, Schenko 712s put on. So these shoes don't actually look the worst, but since I have it all apart, I'm going to replace them. There's no sense in leaving old shoes. I have no idea how old these are. Might as well just replace it while I have it all apart. So I got a new set from EBC and uh, came with new springs <clears throat> and shoes. That's pretty straightforward. Drop some new shoes in. And new springs. And there we go. Gotta hate drums sometimes. Okay, let's go put all this back in. All right, so we've got the new shoes put on. We're just gonna slide this in here. Make sure, slide it between the pads for the rotor. Oh boy, that is tight, tight, tight. So I just took the caliper off real quick, I'm having some issues with it. Um, it's just really sticky for some reason. And it's not liking the uh, rotor to go in. All right, let's insert our axle. Let's not forget our wheel sensor here. I did check all the wheel bearings while I had this apart. And they're actually all in pretty decent shape. Go. Throw that on there. There's a lot of resistance on that wheel. I'm not really sure why. There's something funky going on with the caliper. Both the pots are free, but it's just 
acting like it's stuck and sticking a little. All right, we're gonna tighten these down to 15 foot pounds. All right, 30 foot pounds on this. And then we're gonna have to tighten it up just a touch more, just to get it to line up. There we go. Okay. Front wheel and new tires on. Let's move to the back. All right, pretty simple on the rear. We're just going to reinsert our drums. Once we get that all in place, then we can line it up and reattach it. But it's all we can do for now. Right, go ahead and slide this in. Let's uh, reattach our chain. Not too bad. Let's get our chain adjusters. I have to do them one at a time. And then we also have a, a couple of bushings that sit in here to space the axle out. That one goes right there. Put our chain adjuster or axle adjuster in. Again, I cleaned this axle and regreased it. Still very tight. Tap that along. Second spacer is going to go on this side. And then axle spacer, tensioner. Let's get the uh, axle nut on there. Uh, but we can put this little support on here. Back in. It's the bolted nut and that keeps the the drum assembly where it needs to be. Okay. I'll get the axle set properly. Alright, it's gonna run these in real quick. I kept the setting pretty much the same on this one, and I don't like it. The chain's a little bit too loose. So we're gonna crack that lock nut and we're gonna tighten it up just a touch more. That's too much. <laughs> Should've just left it. That's about right. I just need to check the lines so I can even up this axle. Just a touch more than three. A bit more, so this one's gotta come in just a touch. So we're gonna tighten that down. All right, now that we got that all lined up, evened out, Torque spec for this is uh, about 50 pounds. There's a, uh, a varied amount, but we're gonna start with 50. Because it's a castle nut, so you gotta kinda tighten it down a little bit more or a little bit less, depending. 
All right, let's see. Boy, that lines up really nicely, actually. Yeah, it needs a touch more. Not a whole lot. There we go. Bend that over. That's it. New tires on. Just have to rehook up the rear brake. And it's all back together. Ooh. All right, let's see if it runs true. That looks pretty good to me. Well, there it is. All washed, all done. Just needs to get painted now. A couple minor things, still need to do the seat, the blinkers, stuff like that. But all in all, it looks pretty damn good. I'm really happy with it. And now, I can't wait to go ride it. All right, first run. Let's uh let's see how it rides. Kicks right over. It's a little cold-blooded to be expected. So I don't have any plates on this. So I'm not going to go very far, but we can at least puts it around. joke out right now. Feels light. Feels like a really light bike actually. The joke keeps popping out, giving me trouble. Falling back in. Really maneuverable. Shifts well. See how it turns here. Not too bad. Gotta get used to that clutch. It's a little grabby there at the end. A little different than my CBR. It's definitely bogging still, but it hasn't been rode a whole lot in the last three years or so. See if all the gears work. Ugh, Gonna have to adjust that back brake. idling now. Right, that's first. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Yeah, everything works. Honestly, it's pretty smooth. 
tires are a bit uh, different. Bike's really maneuverable. Feels really light. Feels really applicable. Doesn't have a ton of power. Just find a place to turn around before we hit the dirt here. Definitely not a ton of power to it, but it's not bad. I don't have any mirrors. second there. That's interesting. That could have been on me. Pulls pretty well for, you know, what it is. I think it's only got about 40 horse. Pretty quiet. Honestly, it's a good little commuter bike. Feels good. Like this would be great on a little twisty road. Really maneuverable. Really quick transitions. Definitely coughing and sputtering a little bit. Those carbs might need a little bit more love but all in all that's a fun little bike burn yourself on those pipes if you're not careful which i'll have to get used to but that's a that's a really successful test run on that it feels great i don't see or feel anything that was uh any weird inconsistencies or Anything loose or rattling? It's really smooth, actually. Yeah, I'm I'm really impressed with that. It feels like a lighter 750. Obviously, it doesn't have the power, but it definitely feels like a lighter 750, which is basically, you know, what it was supposed to be. But yeah, I'm I'm stoked with that. That was fantastic. Finally, got this thing out of the garage. Just seemed to be one thing after another. And uh, I've had it for about six or seven months now, and it took me all that time to either <clears throat> find the parts, have the funds, or find the time to actually work on it. And the weather. The weather's been all over the place. And this winter's been crazy. <laughs> it's, we're still, it's still holding on. We're supposed to get another uh, like 18 inches of snow this week. It's crazy. Ridiculous. But... It feels great. It's surprisingly smooth for what it is. Uh, just a little parallel twin. It's it's not quick. Um, it's definitely not fast, but it does feel really maneuverable. It really transitions fast. Uh, the bike's under 400 pounds wet. Uh, it's got a whole, you know, 43 horsepower. It doesn't pull like crazy, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. Riding a slow bike fast is more fun than riding a fast bike slow. I mean, this revs to nine and a half thousand RPM, and you can use that full rev range on the street without, you know, breaking the breaking the speed limit. Really, um, even probably in second gear on the highway, you know, you could probably rev it all the way out without any issue. Where on like a 600 or a 1000, you can't use your full rev range in first gear without breaking the speed limit. Um, so it's it's a fun little bike that you can use all of that. It's pretty quiet, um, but it's it's not it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's a it's a fun little bike. I'm definitely looking forward to keeping this. Um, I really like these these 80s bikes. Uh, I, I really like all bikes, but. These have a little special spot in my heart. Um, obviously, it's not done, but it's where it's going to be for a little bit. 
Uh, the carbs definitely need a little bit of work. They could probably use a deep clean. I did a quick clean on them just to get it running. Uh, could probably use a deeper clean or more realistically, probably just get rebuilt. Don't think that's going to be too terribly expensive. Not that this is really a budget build. Um, it does need to get paint. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep it the, the silver and blue or paint it uh, the black and orange. I personally like the black and orange quite a bit, but it was original silver and blue, and I kind of uh, kind of want to keep it that way, you know? Uh, there's a couple other things. i got to replace a blinker, a blinker cover. Um, the car boots going to the engine are definitely a little weathered. They've got the cracks in them. They've been repaired with silicone. Um, just end up replacing them is, is what's going to happen. Uh, not really that big a deal. It could be part of the issue why it's uh, it's coughing a little bit. Um, if it's letting in, you know, if the air's sneaking through there, it's mixing up the uh, messing up the ratio. That'll definitely cause issues. Um, but it actually rides pretty smooth. Uh, really, really impressed with it. But I broke down uh, everything that this bike cost me. Now, obviously, I got the bike for free. This was given to me from a friend of mine, Matt. I appreciate you. Um, I love it. I'm glad we got it back on the road. Uh, it's a great little bike. I'm, I'm super appreciative. Awesome dude. And, you know, really, really uh, can't thank you enough for, for letting me tackle this project and, and getting it back on the road. But here's what we spent on it. This is including shipping. Just a quick breakdown. Rear shoes cost me 30 bucks. Front pads were 22 I don't remember spending this much on it, but apparently I did. The uh, front caliper rebuild is 38. The seat and fender cost me uh, 100 bucks even. The inner fender and tail cost me 53 bucks to my door. Tires were 161. The bars cost me nothing. I had them at the house. Still don't know what they came off of. I uh, put a new air filter in it. That was 10 bucks. Plugs was eight. Uh, the new clutch cable was 25. And then the oil and filter was 30. Our grand total is $477. That's what it cost to put this bike back on the road. Um, and that, I think, is on the low end of what to expect. Uh, if you, you know, there's a lot of these 80s bikes out there, Cowies, Suzukis, Hondas, you know, whatever. Um, they're, they're awesome bikes, you know, they're... I mean, they don't hand a, hold a candle to the modern day shit, but I mean, what do you expect? They're 40 years old, but they're fun. They're fun bikes. They're very analog. They're very, you know, you, you're, you're riding it. You're really in tune with the bike. I think, um, I enjoy it. So I'm definitely a sucker for them, but there's a lot out there. They're cheap, but just, you got to realize that you're going to, put money into it and sometimes it's a lot more than four hundred and seventy seven dollars so you know don't go out there thinking that every bike for a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars is only going to need a couple hundred bucks worth of work and then you'll get it on the road um you know a lot of these the gas tanks are rusting on the inside or the cylinders if they've been sitting outside can rust and just there can be a lot of issues this one was relatively scot-free every single one of them is probably gonna need the carbs clean you know this is simple simple stuff and it still cost us just about 500 bucks to get it back on the road again not a lot of money but i paid nothing for this bike now if i had paid a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars for the bike then it's a little bit more you know is it worth it um so you know be careful look at everything real close uh, make sure that the engines aren't, you know, seized up or anything like that. Just don't go buy them sight unseen. Uh, there are good ones out there. I've seen a lot of uh, CB750s in my area for whatever reason. They're just popping up out of the, uh, out of the bushes. Um, there's like four or five for sale within like 50 miles from me. And they range everywhere from $500 to $4,000 and everywhere in between. Um, and some of them are really nice and mint. And some of them look like they've been sitting in the shed or outside in the garden for years. So 
take a good look at it. I still say absolutely go find the project, start working on it, make it your own, return it to the way it was supposed to be, or turn it into a wild modern cafe racer. There's tons you can do. It's so much fun. Um, these bikes are not very complex. They're not like new bikes. They're very mechanical and in, in, in relative terms, simple compared to all the electronics on the other one. These, if I can do it, anybody out there can do it. So again, uh, if you guys are working on anything, send me it, send me an email and, uh, I would love to share it with our small but growing community. So thanks a lot for following along with this one. Uh, as I do anything to it, I'll keep, uh, keep you updated, keep a video of it. Well, hopefully I've got another bike incoming soon that we're going to start working on. So I got to go pick it up. Uh, we're totally different than this one. So that should be quite a bit of fun. So I'll see you guys in the next one.